The EV revolution has passed a major tipping point. 31 countries, and this is, this is supposed to be an indicator of when technology- Now 32, yep. 32 countries. Yeah, so 32 countries have passed 5% of sales of EVs versus gas. This is something called the S-curve. And basically what it is, it's saying that once you pass that 5% point, then all of a sudden things start to really turn into a landslide and create adoption. The United States has passed this already. And if we look at the Scandinavian countries, they were at around 5% 10 years ago. I think I saw there's a headline that I posted uh, either yesterday or today that Sweden is is basically shifting completely over away from gas over to uh, over to EVs. I've seen some very interesting things that were showing that as EVs increased, diesel cars are plummeting at a faster rate than EVs are growing. And so EVs are look like they're taking a significant chunk out of the diesel automobiles. So the way this S-curve works is if once you hit 5%, you should hit 25% within four years. And if you look at, let's say you took California, California is at about 25% this year, and it was probably at about 5% four years ago. So it's really interesting to see. You know, right now, there, there's basically two metrics that electric vehicles don't compete with gas vehicles quite as well. One is price, and the other one is road trips. Okay. By every other metric, EVs are superior. They're safer, they're faster. They're cheaper to operate. The idea of not having to fuel it out in the elements at a gas station. I was with a friend. We were in Arizona and he borrowed a relative's Acura SUV and we got out of it at a place going in to eat. It's like, hey, you didn't turn the engine off. So I forgot it. He was like, my Model X it just shuts off. I don't have to do anything with a locked car, nothing. It's just when I walk away, it does all that for me. You know, and he had kind of forgotten how to drive a gas car because kind of, it kind of does it for you. It, it, it's an interesting experience. And those two metrics, when we get that five-minute charging, the, the road trip thing's completely a thing of the past. And we're really starting to hit that point where EVs can be made and sold as cheap or cheaper than gas cars. Because you look at BYD is going to really put the hurt on the Toyota Corolla worldwide with the Seagull and... You know, we had this, someone, this Changan, something or other was $5,000. I mean, it, it's obviously not the car for most people, but, you know, it, it's just another interesting concept to see. But they, they keep coming up. You know, you look at the Chinese cars and they keep coming up with some really, I mean, they're little, they're, they're practical little Chinese, you know, for, for that market, but they're cute. You know, they're, they're, cheap you know I, I one one thing i wanted to mention uh uh you know in with respect to rivian they were awarded i think the number one iah uh, award for safety and uh that kind of brought to mind if you remember a month or two ago the university of nebraska and lincoln conduct these road tests where they wanted to see how what evs would do when they went through a road barrier, you know, we've got those things. You saw that, okay? And you know what? Everybody said, oh, my God, the things are too heavy. And, you know, we ought to, you know, we ought to reduce our weight. Well, there's something to be said about that. But the thing that I thought, this thing went through the road barrier. It went through and over a concrete barrier and almost went over the second barrier. And you look at the car, there was almost no, I mean, relatively almost no damage. You, you know, my thought was, that's the car I want to be riding in. I've known a couple of people that have been in fairly bad accidents that they should not have walked away from if they'd been in a gas car. And they were in Teslas. And the Tesla, the design of the chassis absorbs something like 85% of the impact. The Rivians have surpassed it. And you could see that in that test. Have they? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying it. It's it's amazing, and people don't want to acknowledge this. Tesla drivers are not the best drivers, but I think a lot of that. Ha well, it has to do with the fact that they're mostly men, and 
men drive on average three times as much as women do. And so what happens is you have this pool and guys are more likely to drive fast too. And the Teslas are very fast cars and you know it's really easy to run into something. But Tesla drivers have the highest incident rate of all drivers and it is particular to that brand, but they don't have bad outcomes. And there's even been, there was talking about somebody hit a Tesla Cybertruck and their car got demolished and the Cybertruck was barely scratched. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.